my name is Sean O'Mara. I am field CTO for Marantis and head of product management. I'm responsible for working with our product organization and our field organizations to define the strategy of how we go to market and how we deliver on our products. Multi-cloud is the simplest definition is when I have more than one cloud infrastructure and I'm spreading my workload across that cloud infrastructure. Typically, that would be on-prem or two private clouds. How does that relate to hybrid cloud? Is in hybrid cloud, one of those infrastructures will always be public and one will be private. In a hybrid cloud model, I may also stretch my workload where I have a single workload or single workload component stretched across those two cloud providers. If I had to define what the topology of a typical multi-cloud or hybrid cloud application looks like, um, that would be something as an example, I take components of that application and I spread them across those different cloud providers. So for example, the web front end could be sitting on a public cloud provider, the middleware on another public cloud provider that provides specific resources, and then the data backend on-prem where I can secure that data. So why would organizations consider multi-cloud as a realistic option for them? Uh, and why are they considering it? Primarily, um, it boils down to a number of factors. So to spread the risk, we're trying to reduce the whole, all the eggs in one basket scenario. So if I use more providers, I can have more options. I want to spread that load. Um, it could be because it's geographic. Um, it could be because I have challenges around where I can store my data. It could also be about cost, um, storing data where it's cheapest. Companies like Dropbox are going to move their applications back on-prem because they can create that storage a lot cheaper than they can purchase it from public cloud. And it's also core to what their business does. Um, I've spoken about latency, but latency is very important. Um, we want to ensure that where your workload is as close to those who are consuming it. Um, that closeness also relates to regulatory capabilities. For example, compliance, um, the Privacy Shield legislation in Europe had an impact on that. In other words, things have to be stored close to me. Another example where multi-cloud is very important has become in the edge space. Um, edge is very much still being defined uh, we're not, don't have a clear, consistent definition of what the edge is going to be. But edge is being primarily driven by latency um, and bandwidth comes into it heavily as well. And essentially each of those edge sites are a small cloud and we need to be able to address those sites as separate entities so we can distribute applications to where they're needed. And a couple of examples of edge use cases that are starting to get, get really interesting are industrial. In the industrial space, we need to put small compute clusters close to the factory machines with all the sensors being able to rapidly send data at low latency, process that data and send it back so that they can react. Financial services for security, encryption and other capabilities. And then moving into the future, autonomous cars also need processing capabilities for everything from accident avoidance to traffic control. None of these things come easily. And to enable us to take advantage of these multi-cloud and hybrid cloud application technologies, um, architects and developers need to do a number of things. The first of those is learning new tools and technologies. Um, it's going to change the way we look at delivering applications. And that really is related to the automation and eventual lifecycle management of our applications. The more we can standardize that, the more we can simplify that, and the more we can provide a consistent experience across all of these multiple cloud environments, the easier it will be for developers. And we always want it to be easy so we can get applications into production as fast as possible. From an architecture perspective, 
application architects and, and systems architects need to take a couple of things into account. The first thing, we want to ensure that we're implementing standardized APIs across all these environments. Again, we come back to the point of consistency. The more consistent I can make my experience, both from an operator's point of view as well as an application point of view, the easier it is for me to standardize my application deployments and avoid getting tied into various services which aren't available in different cloud providers. Finally, on the same topic of get, avoid getting tied into services, we also want to ensure that we're not using services that are only available in one cloud provider. From an operator's perspective, we have to really think about how do we create this standardized consistent layer across all of these infrastructures. One of the biggest technologies that's come out recently, obviously, is containerization. Containerization helps us create very standardized objects that we can deploy easily. Kubernetes overlaid on top of containers provides us, again, a standardized orchestration interface for managing and orchestrating our applications. This overlaid with a number of very standardized APIs um, really brings us together into an environment where it is much easier for us to create that consistency across different cloud platform providers. That said, VMs do have a place in the future. VMs allow for us to create applications that maybe are not suitable for being put into containers or applications that need a much tighter integration to the underlying hardware infrastructure um, as Kubernetes evolves or as containers evolve to take better advantage of that. As an organization, Planning to move into multi-cloud and preparing my environment to move to multi-cloud, I need a few basic things in place uh, when picking a vendor. So the first one is obviously the basic tools that I'm asking that vendor to provide. It needs to support multiple cloud providers. It needs to provide visibility and very importantly, programmatic info on my systems. I need to be able to address where I've got resources programmatically so that I can use that as part of my application deployment tool sets. Does it provide effective security and does it install easily and does it provide that simplicity and consistency across all the environments? Related to the actual tools that I'm picking, obviously the vendor is just as important. Um, that vendor needs to offer you technical and systems advisory capabilities so that they can work with you as a partner to help you on your journey. They need to understand the application development process. Um, it's crucial that they understand how you develop applications so that they can work with you to ensure that the underlying systems are able to support the processes. And then they need to offer a effective support org organization around helping you deal with challenges when things go wrong. So some great examples of customers who are going through this journey. Um, we have a banking customer here in Europe. They have decided to move a significant portion of their infrastructure to the public cloud. Um, what they've done is they've set up an internal team that's effectively a cloud service provider. That cloud service provider are using tools to bridge the gap between the public and private cloud, providing a standardized platform for their application developers so that they have the same experience regardless of whether they're trying to deploy applications internally or on top of the public cloud. This brings a level of efficiency as well as reduced infrastructure, um, which is helping the bank move into the future, still providing them that ability to put applications where they need them and secure applications that can only be run on internal infrastructure. Another great example is we've got a manufacturing customer who started on the multi-cloud journey primarily as a risk mitigation process. They have extensive internal infrastructure. They wanted to expand that. So they decided to go to multiple cloud providers to handle and manage risk. The challenge is initially it went as a bit of a free-for-all. 
So they have applications which were des initially specified to be able to run across multiple cloud providers that have ended up in a single pro cloud provider for easy, because it was easy to do. But what's happened is now they're stuck in that cloud provider. And if they can't get access to that cloud provider, it's very difficult to move those applications. So they have no portability. They're going down the journey now of trying to set up a consistent cloud platform or platform for their applications across the multi-cloud environment and slowly rolling out and rolling back to that so that they can have this single consistent cloud layer. The key closing advice that I would give is understand that this journey to multi-cloud, journey to cloud native, it's exactly that. It's a journey. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's going to take time. You need to spend time on planning. You need to spend time setting standards. And you need to think about how do you take your application developers, your infrastructure operators, and your DevOps team along with you on that journey.